Right, hello everybody. It is a slightly different style of video for you guys this time round. Um, and this is for the following reason. Um, I've done a lot of videos about knitting machines for beginners, and that's brilliant. And I think some of you have got machines and have enjoyed using them as a result. Um, but I guess the question is, what happens when you then want to make something on your knitting machine? Well, you need a knitting machine pattern. And... The problem is, well, there are two problems, really. Um, firstly, knitting machine patterns that you can get for free off the Internet, of which there are loads, um, have a tendency to be from the 90s when these machines were popular and therefore not as much in style as they used to be. And then the second problem is that um, if you try and get a pattern for any machine and any yarn apart from your machine and your yarn, um, it can be very difficult to make the conversion. And many of you are already hand knitters and have your favourite patterns already. So what I've done is I have, I'm not a hand knitter, but I've gone to Hobbycraft today and I've bought this hand knitting pattern. And I'm going to show you in a series of stages how to convert a hand knitting pattern into a pattern for your knitting machine. Now, I'm uh, making a couple of assumptions here about your sort of prior abilities, and that is firstly that you can use a spreadsheet on a computer, not to a ridiculous degree, but to a reasonable degree, Excel um, or LibreOffice, or as I'm using in this case, uh, Google Sheets. And secondly, that uh, you have approximately a sort of year eight, that is 12 to 13 years old, uh, current level of arithmetical ability. Uh, I'm not in any way trying to denigrate anyone who doesn't have that level of, of mathematical ability, but, you know, and there are people with dyscalculia and all sorts of other things. Um, but if you're not confident mathematically, maybe have a look at this video um, and decide if it's for you. Now then, uh, I should say before we start, in the first instance, all we are doing is learning how to make a jumper that is this shape, okay? Not, um, we're not talking, thinking about the pattern or the stitch that's on it yet. We will talk about that in later episodes. And indeed, in this episode, all we are going to do is the stitch conversion. So let me show you what I mean by that. Here is our lovely knitting pattern. I'm not sure if this pattern actually comes with the slightly goofy looking lady on the front. Um, maybe it does, I don't know. However, um, if we have a look up here, we can see that there is a tension that they are expecting you to knit to. Now, obviously, this is going to be vastly different because we're going to be using a different yarn. In this case, actually a different gauge of yarn. Um, and therefore, we are going to need to make a conversion. And that's where we go across to our first um, sheet on a, our spreadsheet. In this case, it is Google Sheets. Now... <clears throat> there are lots and lots and lots of pre-existing spreadsheets out there um, offering to convert patterns from one to another. I think it's really useful to be able to do your own. And the reason I think that is because in order to be able to convert reliably, um, these sheets have to be super, super complicated. And they only cover one type of thing, jumpers or, or, or skirts or whatever it is. Using this sort of working it as you, as you go along method, you can convert anything you like. So what we're going to do is this video, we are only looking at um, making sure that the number of stitches we knit on the knitting machine will produce us the same width and the number of rows we knit will produce us the same height as the uh, knitting pattern originally intended. And I'm going to change the name of this sheet okay, by double clicking down in the bottom left hand corner. Um, and I'm going to change the name of this sheet um, to stitch conversions. Okay, now, because I frequently uh, don't come back to these things for quite some time, I find it really helpful to put in really good notes as I go along. So I'm actually going to start typing in uh, essentially as if I'm typing in a sentence, but um, so I'm going to type typing in um, the knitting. Oops, let's see if I can spell that correctly. A knitting pattern says there should be now i'm also going to double click on here 
and oh, maybe not. Okay, just just going to make that first column wide enough. Okay, and we're going to put a number in there. Um, now let's have a look at what it says. It says there should be 22 stitches to 10 centimeters. Okay, so 22 stitches. Um, and let's have a look. It says, uh, here we are, 35 rows. Now, please note um, that I am putting in the numbers in separate boxes so I can do calculations with them. Two, 10 centimeters. Okay, now I am going to just adjust some columns. So at least it's, oh, hello. There we go. Um, so at least it looks vaguely sensible. And because I'm a little bit obsessive, I'm going to um, justify all that. So, right, there we go. The knitting pattern says there should be 22 stitches and 35 rows to 10 centimeters. Now, when you're using a knitting machine, you don't tend to do stitches to 10 centimeters or rows to 10 centimeters. You tend to do how many centimeters to 40 stitches or how many centimeters to 20 rows. And those numbers can change, but those are the ones that I'd use. So if you're going to follow this, you can maybe make changes yourself. So on the next couple, a couple of lines down, I'm going to say uh, this equates to, I'm gonna put a couple of spaces there and justify that to the right. Okay, and there's gonna be some number of um, centimeters to 40 stitches and so I'm going to need to make this slightly wider and some number of rows sorry up uh, centimeters to 20 rows there we go so now what I need to do is to change this and this to um, a calculation that will show what this is equivalent in centimeters to 40 stitches. So let's have a look at this number. This number is 22 stitches to 10 centimeters. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come down here and we're going to say equals that, okay? Equals B2, and that just repeats the number. Well, that's not good enough. Um, what we want is firstly, the number of stitches to one centimeter, okay? So we're going to divide that by 10. Okay, 2.2. Now that still stitches to one centimeter. Actually, I want centimeters to one stitch. So coming up to the um, formula bar up here, I'm going to put brackets around that and I'm going to reciprocate it. In other words, instead of um, stitches per centimeter, I want centimeters per stitch. So I'm going to do one divided by that, okay? Now this is a very silly number. And at this point, I am now going to format this so that it only, um, uh, hold on. No, I'm not, oh, for goodness sake. I want to format it, there we go, button up here, to have fewer decimal places, because that's just silly. So I've got two decimal places. So that is 0 0.45 centimeters per stitch. Okay, so now we've done that. And then finally, it's not per stitch, it's per 40 stitches. So actually I'm gonna, instead of one over the whole thing, I'm gonna have 40 over the whole thing. Okay, so that is 18.18 centimeters to 14 stitches. All right, now, what I'm then going to do, I'm going to copy this, Control C, and I'm gonna post it into here, Control V, although that's not gonna be the right number, okay, because this is, the number of centimeters to 40 rows. Actually, I want the number of centimeters to 20 rows. So I'll change that top number to 20. Okay, so um, what this is saying is that this uh, knitting pattern is expecting 18.18 centimeters for every 40 stitches, okay, and 5.17 centimeters to every 20 rows. All right, that's the knitting pattern. I'm going to put that by formatting it in a little box so I know what I am doing. Um, hold on. 
let's just put it in a box like that. Uh, let's have a nice thick line, put it in a box. There we go. Okay. Now, next thing is um, my tension swatch measures. Okay. So, um, and again, this is now what you have knitted on your machine with whatever yarn you want to use. So this is where you're going to put in some of your own numbers. Okay, so I'm not going to put in a number yet, but I am going to copy that and put it there and copy that and put it there. And I'll put this whole thing in a little box. Okay. So you're going to type in some numbers there. Uh, let's say that your tension swatch I don't know, is 25 centimetres to 40 stitches and let's say uh, 20 centimetres to 20 rows. Uh, no, that's ridiculous. Um, 12 centimetres to 20 rows, let's say. OK, we'll talk about tension swatches another time when we actually come to use this. But I think I have got a video about it. OK. So last thing I need to put in is therefore the conversion factor. So when it says cast on 50 stitches, how many stitches should I actually cast on? Okay, so this means I need to multiply the given number of stitches by. Okay, now actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to format this to be wrap around. Okay, such that it's, um, oh, why doesn't it put formatting in there? It's really annoying. Sorry, I mostly use Excel um, and I don't often use uh, Google, but there we are. Um, no, not vertical alignment. I'll work that out another time. Okay, um, so this means I need to multiply the given number of stitches by, I don't know what, I'll just do that. No, I'll just do that. There we are. Um, let's format that off to the right. Okay, so this means I need to multiply the given number of stitches by a number. Okay, now, um, if I'm getting more, if I'm getting 25 centimetres to 40 stitches and they only want 18 centimetres to 40 stitches, then I need um, to uh, use fewer stitches than it says. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide these two numbers such that I get a number less than one. OK, so I'm going to say this is equal to, by pressing the equals button, you can see up here on the formula thing, this divided by this. OK, and again, I'm going to slightly right. OK, so I need to multiply any number of stitches um, that they give me by 0 0.73 and the rows by and again I'm going to do go to here and say equals uh, this one divided by this one okay and again I'm going to go here I'm going to reduce the number of decimal places okay right and I'm going to put a box around this as well um, so that I can see what I'm th thinking about so that's all we're going to do for this first um, sort of uh, video. We are going to, I'm going to tidy this up a little bit. I'm going to put the link to this underneath the video so you can um, have a look and play with it yourself. The last thing I'm going to do is if, <laughs> if you've ever used uh, spreadsheets professionally, you will know that you need to lock down the entirety of the spreadsheet apart from those few things that you actually want to be able, people to be able to change. Now, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use a spreadsheet, but you're aware that people you know, try to go into spreadsheets and just type in numbers over stuff that's got formulas in and all sorts of stuff. So actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to colour the squares that I think I might be changing at some point um, a slightly different colour. So there you go. I'm going to colour these yellowish. Oh, hello. So those 
I'm going to type in from my pattern, which if we have a look back at the pattern, we can see 22 stitches and 35 rows. Going back over here, 22 stitches and 35 rows. Um, and then again, this is what I, I've sort of made this number up, but it is um, the thing that I would be um, measuring on my machine. So I'll put that in as well. And if I do a different tension swatch and it comes out as 28 stitches, it will then change the numbers accordingly. Next video, we'll go actually start to look at the actual pattern and see if we can convert this massive amount of text into a sensible quantity of knitting machine instructions. I hope you found this useful and a sort of potential start to something useful. As I say, I'll link the video in, sorry, I'll link the spreadsheet in the video description so you can keep up to date with what we're doing and how we're doing it. And I shall see you guys next time. Thank you very much.